Hello and welcome back to another Car Zone review. In Ireland, lots of people see an SUV and they call it a Jeep, but there's only one Jeep and this is their latest SUV. It's the new Jeep Compass. Jeep is now part of the Stellantis group and they also have a new distributor in Ireland. So this really does feel like a fresh start for the Jeep brand. This version of the Compass arrived in Ireland in 2018 as a mid-size SUV to take on the likes of the Hyundai Tucson, the Kia Sportage and the Nissan Qashqai. Now it's back with this latest version that has some tweaks to the styling, the interior and there's also the addition of some new hybrids. This latest version goes on sale price from just under €44,000 and it certainly looks the part of a trendy SUV. But is it any good? In this video, we're going to take a closer look to find out. Please click subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest videos. Remember, you can find more Jeeps for sale like this Compass on carzone.ie, Ireland's trusted motoring marketplace. Jeep is famous as an American 4x4 specialist brand and they have a long history in creating very tough and capable vehicles like the Jeep Wrangler and the Jeep Cherokee. But the Compass was designed for Europe and it actually accounts for over 40% of the brand's sales in Europe. The Compass might be Jeep's most European model to date, but it hasn't lost any of those iconic design cues that the brand is famous for, like this iconic seven slat grille, the squared off wheel arches and boxy proportions. I think the Jeep Compass looks really well and it really stands out in the segment as something much more rugged and authentic than the competition. There are up to five trim levels for this latest Compass in Ireland and they all have adventurous outdoors names like Night Eagle, Upland and Trailhawk. What I have here is the S model. It's styled as the sportiest of them all and it retails from about €50,000. You get 19 inch alloy wheels, there's a black contrast roof and it also has body coloured painted wheel arches and lower sills. At the back, the new Jeep Compass gets the 4xe badge on these plug-in hybrid models because they are all-wheel drive. And being a hybrid, it also has a blue outline on the Jeep badge. S models come as standard with a powered tailgate. It is quite slow to open and close, but when it does, you have 438 litres of boot space. And that's the same across the board in the Compass range. It doesn't matter whether you go for a plug-in hybrid or just a basic petrol engine Compass. So it's more than in most hatchbacks, but it's still a little bit off the best in class. A Hyundai Tucson or a Kia Sportage would have more boot volume, but it's still got a good wide opening and square shape. And you also have some underfloor storage where you can keep the charging cables. For this latest version of the Compass, Jeep has significantly revised the interior, which is very welcome. The previous version of the car, there was quite a lot of cheap feeling materials and then the design was also quite boring considering it's from a brand as iconic as Jeep. But that's all changed now. They've improved the quality of the materials. There's lots of soft touch materials in here and this S model also gets leather seats. This version of the car also gets a new digital driver display and there's also this new 10 inch screen for the infotainment. There is lots of functionality in that and it's pretty easy to move through different menus. There's also physical buttons for the ventilation controls. This new digital instrument cluster is a welcome addition but I do think some of the icons are quite small and it does look a little bit busy. Jeep of course is famous for their four wheel drive capability 
and this compass 4xe does not disappoint there's lots of little tools to help you tackle whatever terrains in front of you so we can switch between different modes for example snow or sand and mud and then there's also two four-wheel drive traction modes four-wheel drive low and four-wheel drive lock and there's even a hill descent control Altogether, the cabin of the new Jeep Compass does feel more modern and better quality than before, but it's still not quite as polished as some of the best in the segment, like the Peugeot 2008 or the Hyundai Tucson. But all versions do come well equipped. As standard, you have 18-inch alloy wheels, a rear view camera, there's keyless start, there's climate control and safety features like lane departure warning and traffic sign recognition. Also, on all but the entry model, you get a wireless smartphone charger. So the doors open wide, giving you good access to the rear of the car. And then once inside, it does feel roomy for a family car. The boxy proportions means that there's lots of headroom and the footwells are a good size as well. Now the middle seat is a bit smaller, but that kind of goes with the territory of these mid-size SUVs. And it actually is quite comfortable to sit there. You've got a flat space here for your feet. The backrest of the middle seat doubles as an armrest, but that's not ideal because you've got this space through to the boot. But you do get two cup holders. There's also separate air vents for rear seat passengers. And there's a USB-C port and a USB port. Jeep has dropped the diesel engine from the Compass lineup, so it's now exclusively petrol and plug-in hybrid. The entry into the range is the 1.3 litre petrol engine with 130 horsepower. It's front wheel drive only and it comes with a manual gearbox. Now Jeep has tried to improve the efficiency in the range, so they've introduced a new 1.5 litre petrol with mild hybrid technology to reduce the CO2 emissions and improve the efficiency of the vehicle. It also comes with an automatic gearbox and it's priced pretty much the same as the 1.3 litre petrol so it does seem like the better option of the two. I'm driving the new Jeep Compass plug-in hybrid and it uses a 1.3 litre petrol engine to power the front wheels and an electric motor to power the back wheels. It's the most powerful of the range with 240 horsepower, but it's also the most expensive of the range and it retails from about 50,000 euro in Ireland. Of course, you can plug it in and charge it, and then you can drive it electric for up to about 50 kilometers. But you really have to keep that battery charged every day to get the best efficiency from the hybrid. And also some rivals now can drive further on electric power only. So being a plug-in hybrid, you can charge the battery and when you do that you'll have an electric driving range of up to about 50 kilometers on electric power alone. Now it will take just under two hours to charge the battery to 100% using a 7 kilowatt wall box or just under five hours using a three-point plug. On the road, the Jeep Compass is a pretty much straightforward drive for an SUV. The steering is very light, so it's nice to drive around town, but out on bigger roads, the steering does feel quite vague. But there is lots of grip and it's comfortable for the most part as well. The hybrid system has plenty of power, but it's not the most refined plug-in hybrid that I've driven in an SUV so if you ask for power quickly it does get quite noisy and at low speeds around town you are aware of those transitions between the electric drive and the hybrid drive when the engine kicks in but the Compass does seem to be an SUV that favours a more relaxed drive and that's when you'll get the best efficiency from it as well. The 
Jeep Compass gets some welcome updates to the interior, new technology and those new hybrids. But it does still fall a little bit short of the best in class in what is a very competitive SUV segment. But in a car park full of Hyundai Tucsons, Kia Sportages and Nissan Qashqais, the Jeep Compass is something new and different. So if you're looking for a trendy SUV that's just that little bit more rugged and authentic than the rest, then the Jeep Compass might be the one for you.